talk is going to be on fiberglass, carbon fiber deposits. <coughs> so, uh, hi everyone, my name is Esan. Uh, before I start, I'd like to thank everyone for being here. Uh, my talk is about thermal aging of a glass fiber, carbon fiber hybrid composites, and uh, under the supervision of uh, Dr. Stephen Nutt in Composite Center. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, talk about the motivation of my, my, my work. And then I'd like to um, present the modeling that, that we developed, and then the experimentation and the results, and finally the conclusion that we got. Uh, over the next 10 years, uh, the demand for electricity expected to, in to increase between 15 to 20 years. So uh, then we need, uh, more, uh, we need basically the more efficient conductors to transfer the electricity, to basically uh, also increase the capacity, first of all, and also uh, to solve all the existing, all the problem of existing conductors. So um, the, the, the conventional conductor is called ACSR, aluminum conductor steel core, which, is, uh, which you can uh, see here, uh, the, the steel, uh, the aluminum is uh, used to transfer the electricity and the steel is used to reinforce the, the structure. Um, five years ago, a company down in Irvine, California, started a new design of the, com uh, of the conductor. It's called ACCC, Aluminium Conductor Composite Core. Uh, and the composite core has many advantages over the steel uh, in this structure. It has a lower CP, lower uh, coefficient of thermal expansion. So when the temperature goes up, it doesn't sag or it doesn't expand. Second of all, uh, the composites are, are, are basically lighter than the steel, obviously. So the whole structure is lighter. So you can have more expandance of your basically colors. And basically, you have lowest sat and lowest sat, and then um, you have the higher strength for the for the composite and higher ampacity, because when, when your when your structure is stronger, so you can wrap more aluminium around the core, and then you can you can transfer more electricity. So uh, the compo uh, the composite core that, that you're seeing here uh, has uh, basically a carbon core, which is the carbon fibers and the matrix is epoxy. And the, the glass shell is basically glass fibers and also epoxy. And it is used uh, and it is basically manufactured based on the pultrusion process. Pultrusion process is a continuous process of manufacturing material, manufacturing basically, basically composites. And uh, uh, the, the normal operating temperature is 120 degrees C uh, for, for the structure. Uh, one of the questions that the phrase is basically since these are hanging in air, it experiences different levels of moisture, different levels of uh, temperatures, partial pressure, cyclic, uh, cyclic load. So the main question is, how long does they last? Because this is a new structure, and we want to check how long, basically, we want to check the lifetime of the material. So um, two types of environmental effects that uh, I'm working on in my group is like the humid aging and the thermal aging. Um, uh, when, when the water can penetrate within the structure, within the composite, and, and maybe react with the, with the matrix and reduce the, basically the, the strength of the material. Or, on the other hand, there is a thermal aging. When the, when the temperature goes up and in the presence of oxygen, there is a reaction happening the, and or oxidation. Uh, and I want basically to know, today in this talk, I want to talk about mainly thermal aging of the composite. The thermal aging affects um, the mainly uh, the polymer uh, of our structure. It, it can affect in a mo molecular scale, which means that the oxygen can go go within the structures and react with the epoxy matrix and changes the, the, the molecular scale, like uh, produce carbonyl, carboxyl, or uh, hydroxyl group. Or in the micromolecular scale. Yeah, because the epoxy matrix is, th is thermoset, so it's basically a network of bonds. And maybe it breaks the bonds due to the temperature. And in a, in a microscopic scale, we're going to have a skin core structure. By skin core, which means that when you put your sample uh, in the oven, or, or you age the sample, basically, at, at 200 degrees C in, in this case, after, um, um, at, or one, 190 degrees C, after 200 hours, if you, you cross-section your sample and you polish them and you look at them under the microscope, 
you will see two basically different layers. This is the intact bulk, which means the oxygen couldn't penetrate or couldn't just go further up here and react with the matrix. And this is the first layer that you see, and we call it the oxidized layer. And this is the coding epoxy uh, to react. Uh, in, the in the temperature that the, that the structure is working, we assume that uh, the fibers is an oxidized because it's almost 180, 200 degrees C. Uh, but just the matrix oxidized in that temperature. And uh, uh, this is the skin core structure. So uh, we start the modeling our system. We have the uh, basically a spherical system. Uh, direction one is a, is, a, is a longitudinal direction. Direction two is a ra radial direction. And we assume the symmetry in the theta direction or or, uh, or, or this direction. And this is the this is the basically um, um, the, the cross sectional area or, or the characteristics of our, of our composite one. And uh, the oxygen has to diffuse and then react. So we started with the reaction diffusion model. As you see, uh, we have the reaction terms here and we have the diffusion terms here. We assume that our, our, our rod is so long, so that then we can assume that uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 direct, the, the R direction is also negligible. So we have two, two different terms here, uh, one for carbon fiber core and the other for glass fiber glass fiber shell, and we have four parameters that we have to measure. <coughs> so this is the boundary conditions that we have. Uh, <coughs> uh, at the interface, we have the continu continuity of basically flow or continuity of oxygen, co oxygen concentration. And, and at the time zero, we assume that there is no oxygen uh, within our composites. First of all, uh, I want to start uh, basically talking about uh, the reaction terms and how we are going to extract the reaction term. Uh, we use the, the standard closed loop mechanism. It's like a, basically the oxidation, <coughs> show the oxidation process. And it, it looks like the, um, the, chain, uh, the chain reaction uh, oxidation. If, you know, you're, you're going to have a radi radicals, and the radicals react with oxygen, and then you have the termination. It's some sort of a polymerization, but, but uh, oxida ox chain oxidation reaction. And Based on that, and if we manipulate it and, and write the differential equation, we're going to get the terms for, 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 our, for our oxidation. Uh, the oxidation terms has two, two constants, beta and R, R0. So we have to, to uh, basically measure the beta and R0 at each temperature. Um, and uh, when we plug this term uh, to the equation, this is the final equation that, that, that we have. And by solving this equation, we're going to get the, the oxygen distribution within our material. And then we can, we can see how much, how much the thickness of oxidized layer is. So we have three parameters, R0, beta, and D, diffusivity. To measure the diffusivity, uh, we made a really thin film, so, um, 10 to 20 microns thin film. And we measured the diffusivity at the lower temperature. Because we couldn't, um, uh, we couldn't go up to 100 degrees, 180 degrees, or 200 degrees C, and measure the if you see since the since the thin film oxidizes and it, it, it's really brittle, so it breaks when, when you start. So we measured the diffusivity at lower temperatures and, and extrapolated for higher temperatures. And this is the diffusivity, the, the, the diffusivity and solubility, and uh, basically the concentration of, of oxygen at the interface, our material. 